So at the moment we've got some basic products, cakes and pies, one of each. And notice if you go to a particular category, you only get that item. If you go to the main shop, it will still show you all products. You can, of course, remove this if you want. Do you see that? We've got shop, and it's still going to show you all of them mixed together. You may want that. You may want that where people just browse and see what's there, especially if you've got it in the order of, up, of upload date. So maybe here's a brand new item added to it. Get people to come check out your shop. Uh, or you can have a simple link that just takes you to the categories and subcategories. Yes. Sure, exactly. It's whatever you want to do in this menu. That's the concept. The page, you don't, I wouldn't delete the page. I just wouldn't put it in the menu. I wouldn't use it. Uh, but yeah, definitely you can make the cake the top category and pie the top category. It doesn't have to be subcategories like I've got here. And so shop will still show me all everything at once. And then once I have, I set it for three items, so when I have four items I'll have next page. And so here cakes exist on that and you can do pies yourself. But what I want to do is talk about variations because that one is a very powerful feature that uh, you might need to have set up. So I will go back to the dashboard, <clears throat> and this time I'll do it. I know I already have the idea. I'm going to sell cookies, 3, 6, or 12 at a time. That's the idea. But I'm going to do it backwards. I need to define my batches first, and then attach them to the products. So I need to define my variations. I would recommend define my variations first. What are the different variations? And then apply those to the product. So instead, we'll go, we'll hover over products, and we'll select variations. So let me, before we do it, because it's it's confusing, let me show you the example from this particular client, just so that you can uh, maybe get an idea of what I'm about to do. So when I go to this client. order online and I'm gonna go tortilla soup we have tortilla soup 10 ounce 20 ounce those are the two variations attached to this one product there's some other complex ones taco this has got double variation okay taco first of all well let me do here taco type grilled or soft. So that's one variation. And then um, you then have to select what's what's the filling. So lamb meat, tripe, leg, brain. Um, so grilled and the kind of meat. So two variations. We can have as many as we want. It could be more complex of course, but then be careful because it can be pretty complex. And so then that price updates as necessary. All of these cost the same, I believe, so you won't really see a difference. But imagine that the soft taco was five cents cheaper. So you could do the lamb meat grilled, and it would be 235. Lamb meat soft, it would be 230. So you can have all of those types of variations. So the good news about it is you have a lot of control, can make a lot of variations. The bad news is you have a lot of control and can make a lot of variations. Because then you're going to have a lot to deal with, a lot to check prices here and there. Does this price match up with that? And I've had to deal with this, me and my company, with this particular client. When he updates his price, when the minimum wage updates, and he has to add a couple cents here and there to recuperate that, it's a big challenge, two of us working at once, to update all of these products because so many variations, especially this. And then don't even start with the combo. There's a You can select a combo over here somewhere where you can choose so many items to add to this combo, and then they... They, of course, go with so many right here. Combo with regular beverage. Okay, choose your beverage. What's your first option, second option, third option? Okay, I want a fountain drink. I want uh, a bean enchilada. And the second one, I want a roll taco with chicken. And then the third, I want uh, a, taco, a, a sope of meat. So then that's, that could see you went up to 1025. So there's all of these variations and different prices. And this can be as complex as you want. And this is a complex idea. I haven't really seen 
a solution that handles this very well. Like I said, I've worked with WP Commerce, e-commerce, I'm sorry, WP Commerce, WooCommerce, and Business Catalyst, and they all have different ways to do variations, and they're all complex. So when someone figures that out, that's the one that you that's going to make someone rich. But for the for right now, to work with it a little bit, let's see how this works. I'm going to need a name and then variations. I need a variant and variations. A variant set and variations. The variant set is like this. This is a variant set. Combo beverage. Combo option one. Combo option two. There's going to be some name here and then sub items. This top name is the variation set. That's what it's asking you right here. New variation set. What's the, what's the large idea of how are these variant? How are these variations? And then these sub items will be further variations. So watch how I'll do this first. I'm going to create a variation called batch. Batch of cookies, right? I've got batch. Then I can say to this batch, I'm going to make three cookies. I'm going to do it quickly, then I'll show you slowly three cookies, then another one called six cookies, and twelve cookies. Just let me show you that, then we'll do it. I'm zooming by it, but we'll do it slowly in a moment. Notice how that looks then. The variant set is batch. So when I see chocolate chip cookies, it'll then say batch and select. 12, 6, or 3. So 3 cookies, 6 cookies, 12 cookies in a batch. I could um, do it like this also. I'm going to do a new variation and I'm going to call this, let's say, size. And then to size, I'm going to add 10 inch, because I could sell a 10 inch pie or cake, 12 inch pie or cake. I don't have to specify 12 inch cake like I did, three cookies. I could have called this batch and it could have been, you know, one dozen, half a dozen, quarter dozen. Then I could apply the batch to cookies and donut holes, and donuts, and bagels. I could have bagel, dozen bagels. Bagel, quarter dozen bagels. Here I was very specific and said three cookies, so obviously I have to apply it to cookies. Chocolate chip cookies, uh, raisin cookies, snickerdoodles, whatever. I cannot logically apply this to bagels, so instead I would create one called batch and simply call it a more generic name to reuse it generically. Let me delete these and then we'll do it because I skipped on price. Not only do we have uh, what are the sizes or variations, but how much do they cost because they'll probably cost different things. So let's say I will create the new variant variation set excuse me, the new variation set of batch, slug, we should know what that is, description, might not be visible, so I'll skip it for the moment, variation price. I can set what is the default price in case I'm selling one of the item, or a sort of... Uh, you know, a default basic price. Let's say the cookies will always cost uh, one dollar. So that's that's my default, one dollar with a basic cookie. I don't really hope to sell basic cookies. They're always going to be in those groups, but let's say just to have a price, because it has happened to me, so I'm going to tell it to you like this, because it's happened to me with a real client. The client 
Texcoco called me up and said, hey, people are buying this, but the price is wrong. The price is like $2 off. So what I did was went into the back end here and saw that there was no, because the previous developer, we had inherited the shopping cart from the previous developer. They hadn't put in a basic price. So it was a, the shopping cart was always assuming a person was going to select either 10 ounce or 20 ounce. But something was wrong and a person could select none of them and still go through. And suddenly the price was wrong because a no basic tortilla soup price was set. That's what I'm saying. Set a basic price or you're not giving away your product. So in this case, at least one dollar. Then I'm going to say to the batch, we'll do it generically. We'll say one dozen. Just to make it obvious, twelve. Description, fine, variation. Okay, I'm going to sell 12 cookies or 12 bagels or whatever because I made it generic. 12 cookies. So, shop owners, you help me. What's a good price for 12 cookies to entice people to buy 12? 11.50. So, if you you can you, if you buy if you put if you put the cookie and you put 12, add 12. It's going to be cheaper if you buy the dozen, 50 cents. And that might not be a good enticement, but let's say 12. Uh, let's say 11. You know, you're, almost, uh, you're almost saving a dollar. So $11 for one dozen cookies. I'm a little confused. You said that this is going to be generic, so if you had bagels and everything, but mm. why do you have a variation price in there? Yeah, that's true. That's true. That's what I'm saying. This can be kind of complex, depending how you're trying to do it. Exactly. I wouldn't. I wouldn't sell bagels and cookies at the same price. True. So maybe this is this is too generic. Um, so maybe I, I would say batch of cookies, batch of bagels, okay. and then have dozen for the cookies and dozen for the bagels. Okay, because I thought you were just going to apply that batch to anything that had multiple. Um, in a sense, yes, but then it makes it also makes sense that the bagels would be more expensive than the cookies, perhaps. Right. So I wouldn't you I wouldn't reuse that batch because then suddenly I'd be selling my bagels too cheaply. So there is no way of actually just leaving that price blank and just just applying <coughs> that batch to anything. So no, there is. Cheaply. There actually is. This is the confusing part also because. We can create the variations right now and then apply them to products. Right. Or we can create the product and then apply the variations and then have that, have that um, customization. We still can have customization. Oh. It's just that okay. you're thinking ahead, which is good. So yeah, that's good. Think about how would this work. For some people, they would just easily create one dozen cookies. Right. But if we want to use it generically, bagels or cookies, then we have to do an extra step on a future screen. Right. OK, I got it. So it's one dozen, I'm going to say it's 11. Add new variation, and now this is going to be one dozen um, of $11. Half dozen. Six. Five fifty. Notice you can also do this as hard values or a differential price or a percent. So I can say add to it a dollar ninety-nine of the base price. One dollar was the base price that I set. Batch, one dollar. And then here I can do, you know, plus four fifty. Because then it would be five fifty. The one dollar plus 450 to be 550. Since I didn't add the plus, it's going to be 550, which in this case is not a diff, not a big difference, but it could be. And percent, so you could say if we start with one dollar plus 50 percent, which would be 50 cents. Uh, no, we would do. Um, 
that's like 500, right? 500%. So to the one dollar, you're adding 500%, which is five dollars, 550, 550%. So there's lots of ways to do this. Perhaps the most straightforward is to just say this is the value. It's five dollars and fifty cents, negating the original base price. And then the last one, quarter dozen, which is three units. So does everyone have some uh, variations? Under where? Okay, what this means is once I start linking variations and products, it will tell me you have seven products that, are, that have been marked with quarter dozen, and you've got four products that have been marked with one dozen. So this will just tell you how many have used these variations. And then when you, <coughs> when you click, then it'll show you all of the products that have used that variation. So it's just a counter of how many have used a variation, how many how many of a product have been set to this variation? I, I mean, it makes sense in that way, but then I, this is like good in terms of like, uh, uh, what do you call, uh, you know, when you try to keep track of the... Inventory? Yeah, inventory. Uh, no, this won't link with inventory, unfortunately. This will just say, let's say you ran out of a product, but it'll still tell you that product used half a dozen, but it doesn't tell you that product ran out that would tell you on over on the products page. Yes. So, kind of picking up on your own question in the terms of uh, this being cookies, it could be like sugar coated cookies and you know, chocolate chip cookies. cookies and not chocolate chip, so they all kind of being together with cookies and mm -hmm. products that have pretty much a base, good set of base price. And then use that variation uh, pricing thing to be kind of up, upscale. Yeah. The whole deal. Yeah, you would have to set it to a percentage or the plus yeah. five or, or, or whatever, negative, or anything in or negative. Or well. Yeah, to give you but, cheaper. Yeah, because then you just go for the base price of the, the, uh, the product and then add on to it mm -hmm. the variation. Yeah. It does give you that robustness if you if you're good with math to to do that differential price or percentage price adding to it subtracting from it percent wise and so forth so yeah you can set that base price add on top of it or subtract for discounts and, and all of that but at the end of the day you don't have a pricing table in the table where all your prices are set up so you can easily go ahead and update the prices you will see a very a version of that on the next screen. So we've all got at least one variation. Let's apply it to an actual product. Let's we're going to create a brand new product. So under products, let's add a new product. Add a new product and we will call this chocolate chip cookies. Ignore everything else just to focus on variations. Now under variations, we've got batch. And the variations that we created, we've got a, vari a variation set and the individual variations. I can add them all, or I can add individuals. Let's say on the chocolate chip, I'm only selling them in half 
and dozen batches. I'm not selling them in quarter dozen. But let's say, actually, yes, I'm going to sell chocolate chip cookies in all three of my variations. So you want to turn on the check mark. The fastest way is they all turn on. Generate variations. Because then that takes you to the price table. Manage. We've got setup, we've got manage. So under manage, you can go then in much detail. Here it already filled in a price for me, for example, because I set that up on the variations screen. The one dozen is going to be 11 and all of that. So for whatever reason, I can decide actually this month the, the dozen is going to be $11 and 11 cents. So I can still further go in and make changes on this screen. Yes. Yeah, d there's many ways to do it. Um, how many people to help you, how many products to do it on, yeah, could be lots of ways to do it. So that's good that people are seeing different ways to use this plugin. That's why I kind of like it, that out of the box, it's pretty powerful. There's limitations, as we see here and there. But some of these things that people would want, they, they kind of like work right away, and, and people get ideas. I can make it work like this, or I could use it like that. So yeah, this is another way another way here. And notice, I, I could have created the cookie and gone to setup uh, and started to create my variations right here from this screen instead of going separately to variations. But the point is I would need to create vari variants and then manage them. And if you make any changes, you have to remember to save them. So I'm going to put this under the cookies category. The only thing I really want right now are the variations in the cookies. I'll put a picture later. I want to see what this looks like. But I have a, t a product title, a category, and more importantly, variations. Publish it. And check what it looks like on visit site. Chocolate chip cookies, product options, batch, please select. Now if I didn't select anything yet, quantity 1, add to cart, it's telling me, please select. So the older version of the plugin had a bug that you could add to cart before making a selection. That's why the owner said, hey, these, these uh, products are suddenly being sold cheaper than they should be. But uh, that's why you want to do updates. So the later versions of the plugin give you that extra safety there. But then I've got, okay, do I want a dozen, half a dozen, or a quarter? I want one dozen, which will be 12, chocolate chip cookies, add to cart, go to checkout. And so I'm selling the dozen cookies for $11. What's that? To rate the product? Thank you. 
Okay, so back on my variations screen again, that's, that's the concept. You've got a couple of different ways to do this. Think of variations generically or specifically. So I designed this one specifically. Earlier in the day I showed you a little bit more. No, I did this one generically. Uh, a little while ago I showed you specifically. I made three cookies, six cookies, twelve cookies. Then it could only apply to cookies. Here I made it generically, where it could technically apply to bagels or cookies. So I can still reuse this. But now, if I were to go to new product, bagels, 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 right? No. Bagels. So I create bagels. I can still add the, the variations. This time I'm going to say I'm only going to sell these in 3 and 6. Generate variations. So half a dozen bagels actually are going to cost $7. And then uh, a quarter a dozen are going to cost $3. So it pulled that price from the, the batch setting that you had earlier? Yeah. Okay. And save the variation and publish. And so that was creating another product reusing the generic variation set. Bagels batch of six or three. Six will be seven dollars, three will be three dollars. Now, yes, of course, um, you can do three quantity two, and then that becomes six dollars, and where it's a, and a, an official half dozen is seven dollars. What you could do is take off the ability for a person to add multiple products on a particular product. See, that's a little trick there. That I could get two of six, I mean two of three to give me six and save one dollar instead of getting one of six, which is an extra dollar. This is, this is one quirk that we'll address uh, next time, but notice I'm on the regular products page and if I add to cart it'll pop up, go to checkout. But if instead you've clicked on the product to view the product completely and add to cart, you don't get any feedback, unfortunately. Oh, I did. Yeah, you're supposed to see that little pop-up whenever then. If you don't see it, uh, maybe refresh your screen. But this does get into the part about, well, uh, remember you've also got the cart, the checkout. You can always go back to checkout and see the cart, even if it doesn't pop up, pop up obviously to tell you what a cart. We have the cart. That might not be too obvious. So when we come back next time, we will also talk about adding the cart to the sidebar so that you always see on the corner here, I've bought seven items. Right now you don't see any of that. And on most shops you see some sort of feedback, some easy feedback that you've got stuff in your shopping cart. This one we have to activate it ourselves. Um, I want to do the duplicator backup and then when we come back next time we'll talk more about like coupons and the widget, the cart widget and other things, editing code and, and so forth. General questions? Yes. Is, is there a way that you can capture um, email addresses from people? Like, if, if maybe they, or because you don't have a sign in for it, right? That's true, but we will be capturing emails if they're if they're in the checkout screen, and they're ready to check out. One of the items that gets asked is an email. Oh, okay. That's so that's a field we could capture, even if they abandon the process at a certain point. We still captured it. Right. So. When we get back next time, we'll look into detail about the 
dashboard store sales, that's where we will see all of the products that have been sold and carts that have been abandoned. So we can talk about that, that you might log in here and see, oh, someone didn't buy something. You'll have their email. Then you can reach out to them. Can we help you? What happened? Why did you abandon the cart? So yes, it does capture an email. We can have it capture other things, and that's when you go to settings, store, checkout, and you can create more fields to oh, capture. Yeah, that's valuable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any other general questions? Okay, so we've got some products, some categories, some variations. Our, our menu is looking pretty nice. Of course, we want to take now a moment to um, make a duplicator backup of your project before you leave. I'm going to make a copy of mine. So make so try it on your own to make your duplicator backup. Uh, if you stumble, call me over, but try try to make the duplicator backup like we've been doing all along. I'm going to put mine in the network folder, and then we'll have lab time until 4, and then when we come back next week, it'll be the last day, and we'll talk more about the cart and other future customization. And if you guys are having other questions, of course, we'll have time to answer them.